Hello, in the previous two videos we looked at the ratio test and the root test for uh, convergence of a series. And in this video we're going to show that if the root test is indicates that it's convergent, this, our series is convergent, then so will the root test. If the ratio test implies that the series is divergent, then so is the root test. So the ratio test implies the the root test for convergence. And I have two background, or three background videos here. And uh, Limit Supremum, Lemon Infimum, that's a good video. And then I have two, the, you know, the, the ratio test and the root test for convergence. So the theorem is this, if the ratio test is conclusive for convergence for a series, then the root test will also be conclusive for a, uh, convergence for the same series. And Essentially, we're going to prove that the limits, we're going to look at the limit supremum and the limit infimum of, of the series, and then that's going to help us know um, whether it's converging or not. And that's, and that's information based upon BV2 and BV3. So here we're going to show that the limit infimum of the ratio is greater than or equal to the limit infimum, um, the limit supremum of this ratio, is always greater or equal to the limit supremum of, of this, the, the nth root of a n. So what that means is, look at this. So this, if this is less than 1, the root test says this is convergent. What also says that this is convergent because it's less than 1. So this determine, if this is convergent, that is convergent. Okay? So th and that's only half the theorem that we're going to prove, but that's step 1. So let's let the limit infimum of this ratio be L. It's some limit, some number. Um, then given epsilon greater than zero, there are infinitely many terms that are in this interval. And that's by BV1. Now only finitely many terms more than epsilon, L plus epsilon, right? So there's only finitely many. So that means at some point we can find an N big enough that being bigger than that, all the terms are less than this L plus epsilon. Well, so if we look at this, we know this ratio is less than this, but so is the next ratio. So if we times this side times a n plus 2 and divide it by a n plus 1, and this side we just multiply by L plus epsilon again, then we, we get something like this, but we do it k times, then we get we get this ratio or this uh, inequality. But here you can see that that every other you know every term cancels with the previous, and there's only two left: this one and this one. And then we can multiply this to the other side, and that's what we get here. Now we're going to multiply this side, the right hand side, by one, which is l plus epsilon raised to the nth power. And it doesn't change this, so we get this. But now, what we want to do, so we have a to the n plus k is less than this. <coughs> we want to take the n plus k root of both sides and then let k go to infinity. And so that's really looking at this. You know, we want to find what this means. Okay, so that's what we have here. This is... Um, you know, the, the n plus k root, and then we're going to let k go to infinity. Now that is less than what we said was this. Then we have to take the n plus k root of this also. So when we bring this in, the exponents go away. Then there's no k, so it can be brought out front, and that's why this is out front. And then here we just we uh, raise that to the 1 over n plus k in the same way with this bottom part. Now notice when k goes to infinity, the, the denominator goes to infinity, which says this goes to 0, but a to the n to the 0 is 1. And same way here, this exponent goes to, to 0, but l plus epsilon to the 0 is 1, so this is 1 over 1 in limit, so it can, we can just get rid of it, and we have this. But this here, l plus epsilon, was part, it was the accumulation point of the ratio. And 
the limit of this is less than this term. So that says that the limit supremum of this is going to be less than the limit supremum of this. And then we're actually done because if this this indicates that it's convergent, then so does this. Then this side is convergent. Okay, so that's only half of it. But now we need to show that the limit in femum of this ratio is less than or equal to the limit in femum of this nth root. Okay, so that says that if the limit in femum is diverged, indicates that it's divergent, which is less than this limit in femum, then it, it will also indicate that it's divergent. So the root test in both ways, if the in a case that it's the ratio test indicates, you know, what dictates what the root test says. So um, then given epsilon greater than zero, there are infinitely many terms of this ratio in this interval. Because L is the we're going to let, oh, I didn't put that. We're going to let L be the limit in femum of this, okay? So it's not the same L as on the first page. So I wish I would have clarified that. Let's see if I can find my pen. Um, well, I'm not going to write it, but that's what it is. L is this limit in femum. And then that way, these terms are, inf are uh you know, the values of this ratio are, are in this inter or interval infinitely many times. And only finitely many terms are less than this, right? Because that's what the definition of an accumulation point is. And we're taking the limit in femum of all those accumulation points. Now, since only finitely can be many terms can be less than that, at some point, all the terms um, have to be greater than L plus epsilon, right? Because there are infinitely terms in here are only finitely many less. So at some point, they're all in here. And that's what that big N represents. So now, um, but and now we can do the same trick as we did before, where this side, we multiply by A to the N plus 2 divided by A to the N plus 1. And this side, we multiply by L minus epsilon. And we do that k times and we get this because we get cancellations and, and this. So this implies that um, if we multiply this over, then a times l minus epsilon raised to k is less than a to the k plus one. Now we multiply this left side, you know, this left side times one, which is l minus epsilon to the nth power, and we get this. Then we, we do the same thing. We take the n plus k root to both sides, let k go to infinity. So that's what this side is. is. But then the n plus k root, that doesn't have an index k, so it can be brought out front, and then we get this. But, but these exponents all limit to zero, which says this limits to one and that limits to one. So this whole thing limits to one, so we can get rid of it. So that says that the limit of the m plus k root um, is always bigger than L minus epsilon. So that says that the limit and femum of this is going to be bigger than the limit and femum of this ratio. And then we're done because that's what we wanted to show. The root test, if the, in, the, in the ratio test, this limit and femum is greater than one, which indicates that it's divergent, well then the limit of femum of the nth root of the a to the n is also bigger than one and it indicates that it's divergent. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Um, please like the video, subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.